I'll start by saying there was, I had an experience in uh, 2012, the first time I went to Las Vegas and I was in a cab and, uh, and we were stopped at a red light. And then suddenly you just get, you got this sense like that everyone in all the cars and it was a large busy street beside like <clears throat> on one side was like a residential neighborhood. And you just got the sense that everyone in the cars was sort of looking over in one direction. And, and I looked over and there was this, on top of the house, this police sniper in a full desert camo fatigues, you know, looking like he belonged in, you know, like, uh, you know, fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan or something on the roof of this house facing, uh, you know, with, with the sniper rifle facing away <clears throat> from our street. And, uh, and, you know, it was very strange. And then as I looked further, there was an entire unit, all very militarized, all looking like they belonged in a war zone, in a desert war zone you know, with these uh, desert camel fatigues and not, um, and not, you know, just in an urban center and the, and the street wasn't blocked off or anything. So it was a very strange experience. And then the light turned green and all the cars just sort of slowly started driving. And then later that, that day, another cab driver uh, told me about um, discriminatory practices by the cab companies there where uh, sort of they were told to kind of the drivers were told, had been told to, uh, you know, favor tourists over the locals. And and um, and sort of other you know people of color, local people of color, and things like that to really focus on the tourists. You know, I thought if, if you ever want to write a story about uh, you know that deals with inequality, th this is a place that you could do it. You know, you know, I wanted to do that. But and then on the flip side, I also knew through my earlier attempts to break into the publishing industry that um, you really needed a setting that could entice publishers, that could entice readers. That was sort of a sexy, dynamic, kind of fun setting. And uh, Las Vegas with the hangover movies and all of that, um, you know, I just knew it was such a sort of sexy, fun, um, fun, exciting, dynamic setting. So, so I knew by choosing it, it kind of would hit, you know, would be very marketable and, and sort of increase my chances of um, getting published. And then, um, and then in additionally, because I, I planned for all my characters to be athletes, and I knew my one character, Antoine, was gonna be a boxer, uh, and, and you know, Las Vegas is the mecca of professional boxing, I thought, okay, even better now, you know, boxing can be featured. And then lastly, you've also got the desert, um, uh, you know, the, this incredible surrounding uh, physical space surrounding the city of Las Vegas with the, you know, the, these sort of, these mountains dotting the horizon and hills and things. And it's such a rugged kind of um, epic, grand landscape. So between all those factors, it just seemed like, wow, this would be a great place to set this story. Definitely. Um, uh, pacing is something that I really, uh, really think about a lot. And um, pacing in terms of the overall story and plot, and then also pacing even um, even in terms of my sentences, in terms of the cadence and flow of the sentences, mixing up uh, the lengths of the sentences, things like that. You know, I really want um, even the language to have a sort of a, a, a sort of punch and an oomph to it. But, but, um, but as, as you uh, mentioned, you know, like in a boxing uh, match, how there's an ebb and flow of um, more intensity and less intensity. I, I definitely want it to be that when there's an action scene, when there's an intense time, in uh, my story that it really does feel like truly visceral and uh and i think what's important for that is that that the reader is uh, given a chance to to rest and recover after you have a super intense scene and one thing i always think about in storytelling is that it should sort of you know be like a roller coaster i always think like a roller coaster if it only went up it would be boring and if it only went down it would be boring and what makes a roller coaster exciting is that it's like you know, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> you know, so, so, um, and, and that's the kind of a broad guideline for how I want to write. And then, and then also because it's sort of divided, uh, over 24 hours, it's divided in half, uh, you know, the, the sort of PM hours of one of, um, of a Saturday and then the AM hours of a Sunday. And, uh, you know, so it's divided in these two, you know, 12 chapters, you know, and a boxing match is 12 rounds. And uh, I knew that I really wanted to build to, um, to the end of each of these halves. 
and uh, you know, and really have them try at least try to have the most intense kind of moments towards the end of uh, these sections. Whereas the the lead in, you get kind of a a bit of a break after that uh, first half, and uh, we can just kind of reflect with the characters. The readers can kind of be in the same experience with the characters, and then you know, really ramp it up again for a final uh, final showdown. Yeah, for sure. So Naomi, uh, Naomi Wilkes, she's, uh, she's a former WNBA professional basketball player, and now she's a basketball coach. And then uh, her father is also a boxing coach. Her father is the boxing coach who taught the four main characters in boxing. So Naomi can box too. She's a really good boxer and a good uh, basketball player. And that's how she met the other three main characters. And uh, she's, um, she's the... Uh, wife of the character Keenan and uh, their marriage at the start of the story their marriage is sort of on the rocks uh, <laughs> to put it mildly and she's uh, she's looking you know to, to sort of end it and then at the same time you know Tyron is someone she'd been in love with and he had been in love with her um, years ago and now he's back in town she just finds out and uh, she's wondering how she's gonna handle this with her being a basketball player and I knew I wanted her to be a basketball player uh, as soon as uh, I started uh, designing the characters, you know, I wanted her to have that sort of that fun swagger that's associated with basketball and, and the way basketball is sort of associated with hip hop culture. I really wanted that to have in her, you know, and she's this large person. She, she's six foot one. She's very athletic. But one of the, the central themes I wanted for, because each of them I want sort of a central kind of a conflict that they're kind of grappling with each of the four main characters is that she's kind of in between worlds. You know, everything about her is that she's kind of in between things. So, uh, for instance, her parents are divorced. She's in between them. She's got these three uh, men whom she, who were whom were her best friends growing up, and all of whom uh, are in love with her, or at least have been lo in love with her at different times. And uh, she's sort of caught between the three of them and, and sort of how is she going to deal with her relationships with them? Um, you know, she, she's mixed race. Um, um, she's um, white and black and she's again kind of caught between those worlds uh, you know I'm an immigrant and and uh, while obviously it's not the same but just a lot of things I heard uh, reminded me sort of the experience of being an immigrant of, of that you kind of uh, one of the things in the book that she says is you know she sometimes feels like she has two communities to call her own and she sometimes feels that she has none and she she's always kind of like caught between worlds and and uh, that's definitely what I've uh, felt as an immigrant so so I so it's, it's, you know, obviously a lot of research, but also sort of drawing on that experience to some extent. And professionally, you know, she was a pro athlete, basketball player, and now she's a coach. So again, she's kind of caught, you know, she, she's still in the early days of coaching. She's caught between professions. She's caught between people. She's caught between her background. She's caught between her parents. And, um, and then even um, her own physicality, she, you know, she loves her sort of... Uh, athleticism and physicality but at the same time something's insecure about it so so uh but anyway she she's a real uh, dynamic fun uh lively uh warm personality and i think uh that's why a lot of a lot of readers have uh, gravitated towards her uh yeah it's definitely been a very interesting period we're all living through right now. Um, obviously, it's very uh, tragic and atrocious uh, what precipitated this, but at the same time, you know, the way people have come together, uh, you know, in such numbers and uh, being so brave to fight for change, you know, is very inspiring. And, um, you know, ideally, this is the start of uh, real change, and it does look like uh, changes are already starting to occur. I think uh, it's, it is important to address, you know, even in fiction, important to address uh, marginalization, inequality, racism, excesses of power. And uh, these police killings of black people uh, involves all of it. Uh, but in terms of my story, looking at uh, Keenan in particular, from his perspective, his storyline, uh, I think, uh, you, know, it, you know, who's perpetrated one of these killings, I think served two purposes. First, by making Keenan a complex character rather than like just a psychopath, 
was to show that this is a structural issue. You know, it's a systemic issue, you know, that people are being brought into it, you know, and that uh, we all have a role to play in addressing this issue, you know, in, in uh, trying to make change. And that it's, that it's not just the, the fault of individuals, that this is um, the fault of our entire society uh, for allowing this to happen. So that, that was one from uh, sort of looking at it from Keena's perspective. Uh, second, I think it's very important, you know, obviously to look at how people are suffering in, you know, in these situations, this issue. But I also think it's very important to look at how this marginalization is taking place, you know, really breaking down what are the techniques, what are the methods by uh, which this is happening? What are the purposes, you know, not just the, you know, there are a variety of purposes, you know, for having this kind of um, uh, militarized policing. And, um, and how is it all connecting to, to the broader system? So I think uh, looking at from Keenan's perspective, you know, uh, having him caught up in all of this and um, making him a character as remorse for what he's done was a way to really uh, tease out these kinds of questions that I think are uh, very important uh, to, to look into closely. And uh, yeah, that's how I, that's how I sort of developed his storyline.